everybody. Thank you for turning, tuning in to Catch Up in the Kitchen today. We are going to do an April Fool's Day episode, which means we're going to learn how to trick people through our food. So what we're going to make is uh, some meatloaf cupcakes with some mashed potato frosting. And then for fun, we're going to make some cocoa rice crispy treats, and we're going to make those look like meatloaf. So let's get started. We're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. Okay, we're going to go ahead, um, what I've done is I have a pot of water on the stove and I'm going to turn that on to high because I want to get that boiling. I've already pre-cut the potatoes that I need to make the mashed potatoes. They're going to be in about two inch cubes and uh, just place them in the water. You can put about a teaspoon of salt and that's going to add flavor. Even though we're going to drain the water at the end, uh, it's going to build a lot of flavor within the potatoes. The, the, the salt will cook into it. Now we're going to turn on uh, our pot of buttermilk, which is going to be added into the mashed potatoes uh, once we're mashing. Uh, we don't want that to burn at all, so what we're going to do is we're going to just keep that on a low because we don't want to add cold buttermilk into the mashed potatoes. So we'll come over here while that's going and uh, we're going to take uh, one pound of ground sirloin. Um, I went to the butcher and I happen to know this recipe just takes a little bit more than a pound of uh, meat to make the 12 uh, cupcakes that we're going to need. So um, we're going to take the little bit over a pound of meat and now you don't want the meat to be too fatty. Mine personally is a 90-10 uh, which means that it's not going to be too fatty which isn't going to create too much grease. If you try to go the cheaper route and you get the 73% meat, then you're going to get what you paid for and you're going to end up with really super greasy um, meatloaf cakes that are not going to turn out like I'm going to show you mine at the end. So you definitely want to get meat that's not too fatty. Okay, so these are pretty easy. These recipes that I'm showing you today, they're very, very easy to make and um, will definitely fool your guests for dinner. Now we're going to start and just put the, we're going to put all of our seasonings in. So I have salt and you can find all my recipes on Ketchup in the Kitchen on Facebook. Um, we're going to put in some pepper. We're going to add a little bit of celery salt. Um, some minced onions. green bell peppers. Now if you don't like onions, if you don't like bell peppers, then by all means omit them. It's not going to change this recipe all that much. And if you like other, if you like red bell peppers, yellow, put in what you like. If you like red onions as opposed to white or yellow, you know, you can, you can play with those ingredients. Um, but the portions, I, I really wouldn't. It kind of works out good. And then I'm going to add some minced garlic. And then uh, we're just going to keep dumping. Got some breadcrumbs. This is the original, not the Italian. We're not making an Italian dish, so make sure that when you get your breadcrumbs, you can use panko. You can make your own breadcrumbs. You can buy the pre-made. It doesn't matter. Um, then we're going to add in um, our uh, Monterey Jack cheese. Uh, can you skip out on the cheese? Yes. Uh, do you want to? Do I want to? No. So we're going to go ahead and add in one egg. And what the egg does for meatloaf is it's really going to help it um, stick together. Because when it's baking, if you imagine what scrambled eggs do when they cook, it's going to cook into the meatloaf and uh, have it all stay together instead of it crumbling. And then I also have some ketchup that I'm going to add lastly. And then I'm going to be ready to mix. Mm. I am a ham girl. So you guys do it however you want but I'm going to definitely uh, mix it with my fingers because I want to get all the seasonings mixed in, all the cheeses, the eggs, bell peppers, and this is going to be very good. Okay, so that should be about good there. Um, there's no harm in mixing it too much. I'm not going to get tough meat or anything like that. So, 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these items, and um, I'm going to take the meat that I have and split it directly in half. And once I've done that, I can pretty much say I can get six out of each half, then I'm going to take that a little bit further, spread it in half again, spread this in half again, and then what I'm looking at is really three cupcakes per pile. So now I'm going to take one of my piles and I'm going to divide that into three portions, okay? And we'll ball these up in just a second. But it's really important when you want things to cook evenly um, that you, just like the potatoes, we cut them in two inch squares. There's a reason that we're kind of precise on that is because, you know, one's going to be tough, you know, and harder, crunchier, and uh, one is going to be um, a little softer and mushy. Well, so as here, we'll have one that's undercooked, and one that's a little more overcooked. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just gonna kind of make that into a little ball. Does not have to be perfect because it's not gonna make a difference. You don't need to grease these at all. These are just like cupcakes. Uh, the cupcake protectors will. Even if you didn't choose to make these, say you didn't have these on hand, don't worry about that because um, you can just put them into the pan. And because uh, the sirloin will create a grease, then it's going to make it to where you're not going to have any sticking issues. But it won't have the cupcake effect, so please go get you some cupcake little papers so that when we're trying to put our dish all together and fool somebody into thinking it's not what it is, then we're going to really be able to trick them. My kids love April Fool's Day, I tell you. And I've always tried to trick them in some way. I'll open up the fridge and they'll have some green milk or purple or whatever because I, I always like to mess with the food coloring. And uh, so um, last year uh, we did a thing called sham burgers. If you've never heard of, of them, look them up online. Um, very, very cute. Uh, very sweet. <laughs> it's, not, it's not savory like this. This is something you can feel a little bit better because at least you're feeding them a protein. Okay. So now that we have these done, we're just going to pop them in the 350 degree oven for 20 minutes or until fully cooked, in which I am going to monitor that. I don't want to just say 20 minutes and done. I, I really am going to watch that time and, uh, and uh, judge for myself. Okay, so I'm just going to give my potatoes a stir. They don't tend to stick, but since you have them on high, if you have anything on high, you're always going to want to give them a stir. I'm also going to check my... Um, buttermilk that it's not doing anything more than what I want it to do and make sure that it stays super low. Okay. All right, so now we're just waiting. Shouldn't be too long and we'll be able to put everything together. Okay guys, it's time to keep the coolery going. We are going to make the dessert portion of this meal. You know I always have to wear my gloves, so pardon me. I think you should too. Okay, so what we're going to be making is the cocoa rice krispies. We're going to be putting them into the meatloaf pans and they're going to look just like meatloaf. So our cupcakes are going to look sweet and our dessert is going to look like meatloaf. And talk about tricking your mind. So what I'm going to start out doing is taking um, this uh, Cocoa Krispies, again, you can find the recipe if you go on to Catch Up in the Kitchen on Facebook. Um, all the recipes are posted for you to see there. If I'm going too fast and whatnot, it's all there with all the instructions for you. Okay, so what I have here is 10 ounces of marshmallows. Um, I like to use the smaller ones. I don't use, like to uh, use the bigger ones. And the reason for that is because uh, the bigger ones, uh, to me, like why take longer to melt them, right? Get the baby ones, it's going to do its job much quicker. So I've got uh, this package of the marshmallows, and I've got an entire stick of butter that I'm going to put in there as well. And I'm just going to kind of break it up with my fingers just a tiny bit to distribute it. This is going to go inside of my microwave for two minutes. Okay? Not really going to do anything to it. It's going to do itself. I'm going to pull it out and we're going to stir it. Now, 
I'm going to take this, and if you have a food processor, then go ahead by all means, put them in there. You do not want to take them down to a super crunch, but these are kind of big, and so if you want it to look like the meatloaf and really want to do a, a good tricking, you're going to want to smash these up just a little bit, and I don't mean a lot. If you put them in the blender, you're going to, you're, they're just going to be crumbs, so you don't want to do that. Um, what I have here on this paper is a fruit roll-up, which I've taken with my kitchen shears, and I've cut into little pieces. Now the green is going to look like green bell pepper, and the red is going to look like red bell pepper. And what I'm going to do is just kind of shoo these off into my Cocoa Krispies. And I've already pre-cut them, so they're ready to go. Because once this marshmallow gets out of the uh, microwave, we are going to be rocking and rolling. So there's no time to really waste. Um, you don't want a ton of these inside because, you know, you've got a chocolate thing going on. But for the look and to full, these are going to look great uh, floating in your, uh, your meatloaf dessert once you slice into it. You're going to see the red and green bits and see how it really does add that creativity. But it's not for flavor, it really is for the look. So I'm going to go ahead and mix those in because I just don't want them stuck all in one place once I mix them with the uh, marshmallows. So we're at about uh, 20 seconds left in the microwave. What I have is some cocoa powder here, which I'm going to add directly to the marshmallows and butter mixture as soon as it uh, comes out. Everybody's favorite sound. Who stops the microwave before it does that? I can't. I'm superstitious. So now I'm going to mix my marshmallows and my butter together. And uh, because of the butter, the marshmallows didn't stick, burn, or do anything. It just acted exactly the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to give this a stir. And then I'm going to add in my cocoa powder. Because that's going to give it, and that's an unsweetened cocoa powder, and there is a difference. So make sure that you're following these recipes exactly as I give them to you uh, when it comes to desserts. We can fool around when it comes to just savory, uh, but we can't fool around when it comes down to making these desserts. Desserts need exact portions, exact temperatures and things like that, okay? So here we go. The Cocoa Krispies are going in. And I'm going to mix them. And it has to be done fast, or okay, or you're going to be sitting there with blobs and not, not too... Uh, not too good looking of a thing there. So we're gonna go fast and it's hot so I wouldn't dare use my fingers to mix this because two minutes in the microwave is very hot. Okay looking really really good. Now I've sprayed my pans. Whoop, get in there and like it. All right so now I've sprayed my pans with um, some, some cooking spray. You can use butter or whatever because there is butter in this recipe. Butter's a really great thing to coat your pan. But you do want to coat your pan, for sure. So now we're just going to get this all over into the pans, just like we would if we were making meatloaf. Okay? And I'm going to stop part way because I want to make two of them. And I just want to make sure that I've got enough for both. And you could, of course, double this batch, give these away. And they're just fun because people will think you're giving them meatloaf and then they get something sweet and really tasty instead. Okay, so this is pretty much all we have to do with it. We're going to put these in there. We're going to let them cool all the way. Um, if you're in a rush because you're trying to make dinner and dessert all at the same time, then you can go ahead and pop them in the fridge and kind of help them cool um, or let them cool all the way. But I promise that if you cut into them before they are cool, that you're not going to get the same effect that I'm going to get. Okay. See, I did want a little bit more over here. Okay. All right. And so here we have it, folks. We have there are two pans that we're now going to let just sit and cool and then we can cut into them a little bit later. Okay, so now it looks like our potatoes are ready and how did I know? 
All I had to do was go and take one of them and kind of put my um, cooking utensil through it and it broke right away. And so I knew I checked a smaller piece that I could find and I'm checking a bigger piece that I can find. And uh, both pieces are just chopping right in half so I know I'm ready. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the uh, off of this water and we're ready to drain the potatoes now. Take them over here where I have a colander waiting and I'm gonna drain the potatoes. Okay. Once I've done that, I've kind of got them water free. A little bit of water doesn't matter. Let's not be too crazy about it because like I said, we're cooking savory. So we get to do, do whatever. The flavor is a little bit better when you like that. Okay, so I've got my potatoes in the mixer. You remember I had we put buttermilk on low so that we're not adding buttermilk into um, cold buttermilk into our hot potatoes. Um, I've got this uh, whisk mixer uh, attachment on my mixer. You can do a hand mixer. You can do a potato masher. All this doesn't matter how uh, the flavor is not in how I'm mashing these potatoes. The flavor is lying in what we're putting in it, okay? So use whatever you have on hand. Make sure it's safety first over here. And um, so what I have is I'm gonna be uh, putting in some minced garlic. Now the garlic that I put in the mashed potatoes was like a, a not as fine as this one. This one's almost fine because I don't want uh, when you're eating the mashed potatoes to crunch into garlic. But if you like whole garlic, pieces of garlic, then it's really, you're gonna read mints on my recipe. But I'm telling you, just use whatever garlic or omit it because it's so little. We're gonna put in some uh, fresh ground black pepper. And then we're gonna put in some uh, of our kosher salt. And then I'm going to put in about a cube of butter. Um, I'm going to not all the way put it in there because it's like you can't take it back once you put too much, okay? You can always add to it, you can't take it away. And uh, I didn't cook any more potatoes, and in case I get runny potatoes, I wouldn't be able to add potatoes. So I want to always just add my liquid sparingly as I need to get the right consistency that I'm looking for. I'm going to come over and get the buttermilk and turn off my stove. And I am going to start mixing these potatoes on at a low speed. Not too high. I don't want them flinging out at me and uh, getting all crazy. Now, what you want to do is, your, your potatoes are getting mixed. Now, you can tell that they're super chunky. Now, however you like them, you can stop it when you're ready. But me, I like to make sure they're getting off the sides, getting in there. Because this recipe that I have for you is already going to make a thicker potato. And why? Um, is because we're going to be pretending that it is uh, uh, frosting on our uh, meatloaf cupcake. So, um, we definitely want to make sure that we um, are doing that. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of this buttermilk in here. Little bits at a time. I almost forgot that I'm going to be putting some food coloring. Choose whatever color you like. If you don't want to even uh, do it and you want your frosting, uh, your mashed potato frosting to look just white like regular mashed potatoes, then uh, leave them the way they are. But I'm going to put blue mashed potato frosting on mine because blue is my favorite color. Now you know. All right, so I'm going to stop this mixer for just a moment. And like I said, we're just doing this this way because this is the method I'm using. If you were using a hand mixer or mashing them yourself, but I suggest not adding the food coloring into the potatoes. You have a harder time mixing them up than if you add it to your buttermilk and to your wet ingredients. So anytime you're cooking usually and baking, uh, you want to go wet ingredients with wet ingredients and dry with dry and you'll be golden. All right, so I'm gonna put this a little bit higher because I am within moments of being done with these. Mmm, they smell so good. Who's hungry? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna lift this up here. I'm going to use my spatula to get all the potatoes off because I've got 12 of those that I need to frost and I want to make sure that I have plenty or even some to put on the side. 
and I don't, I didn't end up using my whole stick of butter, but if you love butter or need to watch your butter, then use whatever butter you're allowed to use or whatever um, butter that you're comfortable using. Okay, so now we have blue mashed potato frosting, so to speak. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to show you a little trick on what I plan to do with my uh, mashed potato frosting. Okay. Um, have you ever tried to put things inside of a piping bag or a bag because you needed to, um, to put frosting on or something like that? And they're so wiggly and so wobbly that they just want to, they just, <laughs> you're literally just doing this number with them and you don't know what to do. Well, I know what to do. And you're going to catch it in the kitchen right now um, by grabbing a cup from the cupboard and you're going to take the piping bag and you need to find the right size cup so it's can do that but this is going to help us hold it okay and i do this when i'm cleaning up after and with all my leftovers things like that i'll take a gallon ziploc bag put it in whatever size container holds it wrap it around the edges and dump my ingredients in and then boom and nothing and it wasn't a mess or anything my cup isn't even dirty or anything so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take this and I'm going to put it into the piping bag. Okay. Now, here's another trick. So you don't have a piping bag. You're not a baker. You're not handy. You just want to do this for April Fool's Day. So that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take a, just a plain Ziploc baggie. Doesn't matter what kind, and it doesn't even have to be Ziploc. Okay. So uh, we are going to put that into it and we're just going to do the same kind of thing, cup it around, okay? Now, same thing, putting it, putting it in here. You don't want to overfill it, you know? Like you can always go back and do this again and put more in. But I see more people having problems where everything's squirting out of the top and not coming out of the end. So like don't overfill these bags, there's no reason for it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this that we have now and we're just going to clip the end of the bag and then it becomes an instant piping bag. Um, now if your ingredients are too hot, this is going to melt, that might not work or, or whatnot. But you can take scissors and just clip it off as little or as big as you want. And then I'll show you in just a few moments when our meatloaf cupcakes are ready. I'm going to show you how we're going to frost them up and make them really, really special. Okay, welcome back to Ketchup in the Kitchen. Thank you for staying with us. It's time to check on these meatloaf cupcakes. I smell them. Sound, it smells like the ketchup is caramelizing. And I'm right. These are more than ready. Okay? So here they are here. I'm going to take them out. Okay, we don't need to wait for them to cool or any kind of thing like that. We're going to go ahead and plate this meal up. Okay? So I'm going to just pick which cupcake that I would like to uh, Go ahead and uh, put on the plate. Okay, I'm going to take this one. And we're going to put that right inside my little ice cream bowl there. Because it's going to uh, just go with the theme. It's going to make it look like I'm giving dessert. Now, uh, I'm going to take the piping bag that we've prepared with mashed potatoes in it. And now we're going to go ahead and frost these. Now I like to start around the edges and work my way into the middle. If you're not familiar with how to frost a cupcake, start on the outsides. And you kind of want to cover that meatloaf so that whoever's eating it does not notice that it's actually meat. Okay? Go ahead and take the cocoa crispy treats and we're going to remove it from the pan and go ahead and get it ready for slicing. So because I uh, went ahead and coated the pan, it's going, it should just fall right out. And I'm right. So we're going to go ahead and put this here. You want to use a serrated knife and the reason like to use a serrated knife when you're cutting breads, things like this, is it's going to help you cut into it and um, an unserrated knife is going to smash your product down. 
the serrate is going to cut into it and give it that look that we're looking for. So let's go ahead. Now a normal meatloaf is going to be cut about an inch apart. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay? Go ahead and slice it a few times here. And if you look, it really looks like meatloaf. So here we have our meatloaf cupcake with mashed potato frosting, as well as our cocoa crispy treat that looks like meatloaf. But how does it taste? You know I have to try, right? It messes with your head. It messes with your head because you're looking like it's frosty and you're expecting to taste sweet and then it's savory. You have to try this. Make this for your kids. You really have to try it. Okay, so now one of my favorites, I would have probably even added a tablespoon of peanut butter to this, but uh, I skipped out on it. But also I want to show how you can see here how there's like little pieces of the uh, fruit roll-up that was put in there that makes it look like a little piece of bell pepper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, messing with the brain. It's sweet, it looks savory, but it's delicious. This is sure to be a hit in your home. Please try that. Look on uh, Ketchup in the Kitchen on Facebook for the recipes and what quantities that you need to put in it, as well as more, uh, more recipes um, to try. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post things that you can make um, if you're not into meatloaf. I'm going to have a few other options for April Fool's Day. But please enjoy your holidays always and make sure you have fun with your family. Make memories, take pictures, and have a good time. Thanks for tuning in.